Welcome to Coffee Break with Rachel V. Hill, presented by Superbook Sports. Taking a daily look at the biggest stories in Denver sports and interacting live with you, the Coffee Break fam. So sit back, relax, grab a cup of joe, and enjoy your coffee break. Here's your host, Rachel V. Hill. Why, 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 why? I have so many questions for Jay Norvell. Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to Coffee Break. Richie Carney, Rachel Veal, hang out with you for the next 30 minutes. I have so many questions. Richie's over here just shaking his head like, Rachel, your team man, oh. what's going on? Yeah, you tell me what's going oh, on. Oh my gosh, just a giant headache. When I tell you my phone has exploded this morning from all of my CSU friends being like, why? with the head coach, Jay Norvell, say this, and we have the audio for you. We'll play I'm going to play it twice for everybody. But just so you know, oh, my goodness, it's a headache. And I sat down with ESPN today, and I don't care if they hear it in Boulder. I told them I took my hat off, and I took my glasses off, and I said, when I talk to grown-ups, I take my hat and my glasses off. That's what my mother taught me. <laughs> so, and I sat down with ESPN today, and I don't care if they hear it in Boulder. I told them I took my hat off, and I took my glasses off, and I said, when I talk to grown-ups, I take my hat and my glasses off. That's what my mother taught me. <laughs> so, why? First of all, you know, last week, Shadur Sanders came out and said it was personal. Why make it personal again? Two, you guys, this is just such a bad look for CSU. You just gave the nation a reason to come and pick on you after you lose. So you better be able to put up a hell of a score or of win. But if you get slaughtered 50 to something, I think the line is like, it's something crazy. I can't remember exactly right off the top of my head. But you better be able to put up some numbers. Otherwise, the nation's going to come look at you and be like, you're the laughing stock of college football this weekend. It's, it's, I'm just going <laughs> to, I feel like I need to keep my mouth shut on this one just a little bit. Rachel. Hold in my emotions, but it's not a good look. It makes absolutely no sense. I don't know why you would do ever do it. What he, okay. And listen, I understand from Jay Norvell and CSU's perspective, I'm sure he's been hammered with nothing but CU and Dion questions all week. Bang, bang, For bang, sure. bang, bang, today. And this might have just been a moment where he's like, you know what? I've had enough of this guy. I'm done. But to, to do that, the only chance that most people, including Vegas, are giving CSU to win this game is that the buffs are feeling themselves. They're 2-0 and against two big teams. And they're looking ahead to Oregon and USC, which are big ranked primetime matchups on the horizon. And you just made sure that they're now not going to do that. They're not overlooking anything anymore. No. This We talked about it for weeks. This team is doing the Michael Jordan last dance chip on the uh. shoulder. They're looking for reasons to put a chip on their shoulder to motivate themselves, even if it's made up out of thin air. And you literally gave it to them. I what know. are you doing? My only, so when I'm trying to think, I'm like, why would Jay Norvell say this? First of all, it's one thing to say it to ESPN when you're on your phone calls and it's like, okay, whatever. Like a lot of what stays there kind of stays on those phone calls. But to go out and then repeat it at a public restaurant on the coach's show, I'm like, okay, what's the only reason he would say this? My only thing I can come up with is he's just trying to pump up his team, right? He's trying to pump up the city of Fort Collins because everyone's just assuming they're going to get absolutely roasted, myself included in there. That's the only reason I can think of. But dang, you better put together a really good product on the field. Otherwise, you just made the entire city of Fort Collins, you just made CSU a laughing stock on national television. To quote one you of the great oh. poets of our time. I'm so stressed now. Lil Wayne. Weezy and baby. Weezy. Real G's move in silence like lasagna. Okay? My point. Real exactly. G's move it. So if that's Jay Norvell's strategy was like, hey, I'm going to rally mm. the troops and get Fort Collins behind us, and I'm going to show my team and my players and my school that we're not going to back down to to Dion and CU, oh. you just did the opposite. Okay? You did. David doesn't antagonize Goliath. Oh, okay? my gosh. You, if you're going to go out there and do it, you beat them. You let everybody think that you're the underdog, that you have no chance, and then you go out there and shut them up. And if we're going to talk about moms, which, by the way, Jane Orville sneakily, like, is that a dig at Dion's mom that she didn't teach him to do the right things I like his mom did? Know. But if we're th things that my mom taught me, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't, don't say, say it, it at all. all. And secondly, don't start a fight you can't finish. Don't write a check with your mouth that your body can't cash. It's... And it feels like that's what you did. I just, I, I, 
I can't come up with words. You guys, this is like so, as a Ram, I am slightly embarrassed by this comment. Like I truthfully can say that I am like, coach, first of all, we're literally taught like brotherhood. There's brotherhood in college football. And I get it. We all want to let the fans talk the smack. Mm -hmm. Don't go out there and say that. We Sean Payton broke the brotherhood in the NFL, right? Wasn't that a lot of the conversation? A hundred percent. And what happened? He got made fun of. He, he was apologize. a laughing stuff. It's not a good look. I just, I don't know why you would say, like, I'm just going to keep coming back to that. Why is my question? Why would you yeah. say this? Why would you put that out there? It's like, if you need to hype up your locker room by publicly doing it, then there's another problem because you should be able to hype up your locker room by getting in there and speaking to them. I'm just, guys, this is so bad. It's just, it's just setting up. For I love like, all the comments. Let's, let's say they go out there. And they lose by 30. That's embarrassing. Okay. How do you go sit in front of the media in a post game press conference and back up what you've already, what you mm -hmm. talked pregame? How do you do that now? I You're know. Like, oh, I, yeah, I guess I was wrong. <laughs> My, bad. My mom always taught me to, to admit when I was wrong. It's just such a bad look. And gosh, and it kills me to say this too. Dion hasn't had any comments about any other coach. He was very, com he was complimentary of what's going yes. on. And I believe one of his sons was like recruited by CSU for a little bit. He hasn't said, spoke negatively about anyone. And the fact that these comments just keep coming and coming and coming, I'm like, when are people gonna get it? And it the, doesn't benefit you to talk poorly about someone. The other thing too is, Ugh. prior to that coach's show, from what I had heard, Jay Norvell was like complimentary and respectful oh, and, sure. and all that about Dion and about CU. So like, why pivot now? Why, why all of a sudden, like, try to catch him with a sucker punch right before the game? You know to I mean? get him talk. I, yeah, I, I, I don't like, know, man. I, I can't understand it. I, I don't. And I feel like it's going to age very poorly for him. So tell me this. Why do people continue to feel the need to talk so poor? Let's just use the word poorly about Deion Sanders and be willing to call him out for things because he's doing it somewhat differently. Like, you don't see other coaches calling out, I don't know, like, Nick Saban's a little bit of a different pedigree, but mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, we would never see somebody go up. And CSU's played Alabama a number of times. Mm -hmm. I never saw anybody comment on Nick Saban. This is going to feel like one of those games. Yeah. I remember those CSU-Alabama games. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. terrible. Well, first of all, I do want to just say my Remy said the first touchdown in one of those Alabama games, and I was very proud. Very proud. They may have got you know slaughtered like 50 to something. Go Top out and out Nick Saban's mom. Which is why. I don't understand. Um, yeah, to, your, to your question, though. I, I think that this is something that comes, whether it's in football, in business, in life, whatever, that kind of skepticism and, and that kind of like, you know, treatment or or kind of turn your nose up at it. I think that comes with people that boldly and confidently and proudly do things a different way. Mm -hmm. Dion is ripping True. up the the traditional playbook on how to build a, a division one power five college football program. Yep. And he's doing it loudly in style and in, in everybody else's face yeah. and unapologetic about that. And so we, uh, there were comments from, from TCU before the game of like, well, you know, T Dion's not playing in the game. So, you know, we're not playing against Dion. We're playing against the CU buffs. Okay. Um, and then we, we, uh, you know, Matt rule with the comments that he indirectly made, which a little bit of a stretch, yeah. but you know that, and then this is this is direct. This though. is that so is, direct. This is, like if, if we're talking about, you know, sh if Shadur Sanders comes out and and does the whole it's personal routine, nobody's gonna be like, was it really? Yeah. This time it's real. It's so real. Does Dion wear sunglasses for the entire night game? Hell yeah! I hope he does. <laughs> I hope he wears sunglasses at night through halftime uh, into the post game presser. Put the hood up. Do it all now. Not embrace the villain that he's trying to make you out to be. All right, comments. Rachel, are you going to the game? I will indeed be at the game on Saturday night, 8 p.m. Mountain Time, late night game. Oh, man. <laughs> God, it's going to be so tough. It's going to be so tough. Um, Fuel to the fire. CSU upsets CU. Lawrence, I'll give you this. I think if they hadn't said a single thing, there could have been the slimmest Catch possibility. A hundred percent. Now, not a friggin' chance. 100%, Rachel, just kind of dumb, go buffs. Never a fan of it. Um, I feel that. I'm never a fan of, I don't know, coaches talking coaches. Like, there is a code. I, yeah. I agree with that. I, I think there's a way to do it. Because, again, this is a competitive environment. And these they want to have, have talk around the game. I get it. These guys have egos. Yep. You know, there's an entertainment element to it. So I think there's a way to do it. And we've had plenty of examples of it at all levels, you know, up to this point. 
it just didn't feel like this was that way. It was this a good moment. It yeah. was not a good moment. And Jay obviously went on even to say, like, this is an op awesome opportunity for our school, for these players to be on college game day. This is the biggest Rocky Mountain showdown, arguably, that's ever happened from a <laughs> national attention standpoint. Oh, yeah. I know that both teams have been good in the past, but oh. ESPN, Pat McAfee, first take, Sports Center, big noon kickoff, never before were they this interested no. in the Rocky Mountain showdown. And now... On Sunday, if the Rams don't win, there's going to be a lot of talk coming back at it. And I am scared for that as a Ram. Um, I'm probably going to honestly need a really good laugh after that. So it's a good thing that our <laughs> station is going to be giving away Adam Sandler tickets on the air, you guys. So this is a win them before you can yes. buy them. So you have to listen to 104.3 The Fan um, and you can win your tickets into Adam Sandler's with a surprise guest, the I Miss Shoe Tour, December 12th at Ball Arena. That's really fun, honestly. I am a massive adam sandler fan really i had no idea until yesterday that the sandman's coming to town yeah i will be there i'm i am buying a ticket as soon as they come on sale that is going to be amazing okay so well first of all i'm kind of excited for it too and i saw people who are already like i'm interested in the event i'm interested so 1043 win them before you can buy them it's a great opportunity now sean payton is sean payton throwing shade so of course every single weekday i google on my little computer all right the matchup for the week. So obviously the commander's coming into town to play the Denver Broncos. And I'm like, what are people in like Washington talking about? Right. And it's all about how possibly Sean Payton threw some shade at Ron Rivera. And I'm curious your guys' take on this. Bear with me because it's a little bit of a longer clip. But you tell me at the end of it if you think Sean Payton threw some shade over there at Washington's coach. Was there ever a thought about going back to New Orleans? That was out there. Yeah. We um, and and look, it, it's a it's it's a trickier one because it, look, it involves someone that that I've hired, Dennis Allen, and and we've worked together on two different stints. Um, but I think in the end, uh, for me, it was looking it was looking really closely at, at, at these teams, and then there was a, you know, there everyone's waiting to see what happens in Washington, and there there was some interest from some potential ownership groups that are going to be bidding on that currently a bid on that team that we're getting ahead of the game saying, wow. hey, you know, if we get awarded this team, would you? And and so there were a lot of different things at play. That's interesting. Right? And, and that's a place that's had great tradition. Like when I came into the league, Adam, my first two years were Philly. Of course, yeah. My next four years were New York so Giants. So you know all about that. And then my next three were the Cowboys. That My whole entire NFL career prior to New Orleans was NFC, NFC East. And what happened to that program? Was that one that made you think a little bit? Listen, that place, my uncle loved the Washington franchise. Last year, we go there to play. And I'm pregame, I'm looking up in the crowd. A third of the fans are Saints fans. And I'm like, what happened to this place? Yeah, that was one of the sad. six. That was one of the six pillars. They used to fight for tickets in divorces. I mean, for, there's a 50 year wait list <sighs> to get tickets. It's that sad. Was, that was a special place. It was. So it'll come back. I hope so. All right. So you guys tell us in the comments when you walk away from listening to that audio, does that fire you up enough to be like, all right, the disrespect? Now, of course, these are kind of different levels, right? We're talking about like direct disrespect over with CU, yeah. CSU, and then this Sean Payton thing. I'm kind of looking at it as like, I kind of get it. Like, yeah, maybe they were saying, hey, Ron would have been out for the commanders if the new coaching staff had come in. But like, I feel like we're kind of reaching here for yeah, some drama. Listen, on a scale of of one to Jay Norvell, this is like a four. <laughs> this is like a Matt Rule. You know, I don't uh, like, and, and listen, just like in all seriousness, from like an operational standpoint, when you're going through ownership transitions for and sure. changes, and even when you don't have all that going on, the, the, the off-season coaching cycle and all that. Yeah. It's it's just it's like the Game of Thrones. It's a massive yep. chess game, and there's always pieces and moves. So there's no doubt. I have no doubt that Josh Harris and that ownership group were were reaching out to Sean Payton, oh, and, yeah. and Sean Payton was the crown jewel yeah. of that of that coaching cycle for sure. You know, and uh, he was the most high profile guy. So I have no doubt that they're like, hey, we're really serious about buying this team. If we get it. You are know, you interested? Are you interested? Because I doubt he would have been interested with the previous regime. Yeah. You know, so I, I think that's totally reasonable for that to have happened. And the like the unfortunate reality in the NFL, whether you're a player or a coach, you're always replaceable. There's turnover there's, all the yes, time. There's always 
that's that's their job as yep. the ownership group is to make sure that they have a succession plan, the next in line, that they're always doing the best that they can yeah. to make their team successful. And so, yes, unfortunately, that means like if you're Ron Rivera, your ownership group is likely having conversations about if whether or not you're replaceable. Yep. Um, all right. You, again, let us know if you guys think that that was disrespect. I just, again, was kind of like, no. all right. No. Cool. But I guess if you need something, you need to add a chip to your shoulder to be able to pull out a win or it's whatever. For CU. Oh, boy. Oh, man. I'm I'm just really dreading Saturday night, you guys. Like, I'm excited for the hype because, like, with college game day and everybody there. But I'm like, oh. This is going to be one of the best vlogs to look back on for you. Oh, just no. like the emotional drain that's going to happen over the course of the day. Especially as I get more and more tired, I'm just going to be oh. like, oh, no, 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 home. no. That long drive home to 2 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, super stoked for it. I am stoked, however, that Jerry Judy is most likely to be back for week two. It was really a game time decision for week one that he wasn't going to play. He's been out of practice. Things are looking a lot better. Of course, I'm sure they're still going to have him as questionable or whatever it's going to be for Sunday. But I'm excited that Jerry Judy's injury wasn't as like withstanding as we thought it was going to be. I said like week three or week four yeah. for him to come back. So if he's out there already practicing and looking good, we need him back. Yeah, listen, though those for wide receivers, those lower body body injuries, those soft tissue injuries, they're yeah. they're so unpredictable. I mean, when when this all went down and we were like we were ready to push the panic button. Jerry Judy's tweeting out laughing emojis yeah. and stuff like that. And then, and then we were like, oh, so that means he's confident he's going to be back in week one. Then he wasn't. True. And we were like, oh, okay. But yes, I agree. It's it's an encouraging sign that he's back. We'll see uh, pretty quickly how up to full speed he is, if mm -hmm. he's got any lingering issues, if they're trying to rush this back. But whether they're rushing him back or not, I don't care because they need him. Oh, you don't care if they're going to rush him back. They need him. Interesting. So here's my thing with the rushing back. It's like, okay, well, long term, right? If we're kind of already, it's hard, it's hard to say this because it's only week one and I'm like, you guys are already down. But like I said earlier on this week, they're not going to win the Super Bowl. So it's like, okay, get everybody as healthy as like as fast as you can kind of thing. But like, Make sure that they're actually healthy. I, I get that. I agree with you. And I'm not, listen, I'm not, if, if Jerry Judy needs to be like numbed up and, and, and you know, Mr. Miyagi at yeah. halftime and all that stuff, then okay, I we got might be it. pushing it. I, I, that's pushing it. But if he's 75% go, 80% oh, go, I think, eight, I think Jerry Judy at 80% is still pretty clearly the best wide receiver on this team. Oh, it's without yeah. a doubt. So, so, and listen, they, they dropped week. If now if they won in week one, the conversation changes. Maybe you are a little bit, but listen, you dropped True. week one. And I know I gave you that stat that, you know, Sean Payton in his last years in New Orleans yep. started one and one or oh and two and went to the playoffs in four of his last five years. But you don't, doesn't mean you want to test that fate. True. You know what I'm saying? Doesn't mean you want to like prove that again. So this is a big game against Washington. Mm -hmm. There's there's no doubt about it. And it is, they're not going to win the Super Bowl, but there's still a lot at stake. Is this a must win? It's such an overused. I term. agree. No, but it's not a. It's not a must win. Really? No, because well, it's okay. I what disagree. The, okay, it, it's if it's a must win, then what is it a must win in order to accomplish? It's a must win to get on the right track. If they go zero and two, okay, the, yes. If it's this if team is just gonna go. When it's like must win. <sighs> it's like it's a must win, or they're going to miss the playoffs, or it's a must win, or they're going to, you know, whatever. I mean, I mean if they go zero the and two, let's just Statistic, real quick. Statistically speaking. Teams that start 0-2, their percentage chance of making the playoffs drops significantly. 0-1, it, it drops. 0-2, it drops significantly. 0-3, it's like very rare. Like you can count them on, on one or both hands really in quick. NFL history. Really quick. We're going to pull up the schedule. You lost to Vegas. If you lose to Washington, you're 0-2. Miami, Yikes. that's not going to happen. Chicago, maybe. I think they're beatable. The Jets, now maybe. Oh, yeah. Kansas City, not happening. Green Bay, I feel like it's a coin flip. They look. Listen, I am. I have been a big Jordan Love doubter. Yeah, they looked good. I know they looked good. But then you have Kansas City and Buffalo. Yeah, no, it's you. Yeah, okay. It, this, this is a must. These win. were supposed to be the. Uh, if you want to be, if you want to be better than three games under five hundred by the bye week, this is a must win. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the easy part of the schedule. And if you come out 0-2, yeah, things and, start and, to get and, a little you know, bit I'll say this because I feel like I've been an advocate of, of patience and, and, and all of that, like when I laid that out for you yesterday about the 0-2, the 1-1 thing. But I'll say this. 
there there is a delineating line. There is a point where the future and what you're building toward no longer matters if you don't handle your business up front. True. So yes, it's like, hey, because I, you know, when they lost, I said, hey, they're gonna they lost against the Raiders. I pick them to win 10 games. This is just one of them. But that that starts to tip, that scale starts to tip. If you keep losing early, because then it's like, okay, well, now I picked you to, it becomes I picked you to win seven. Where are the seven you're going to win? Yeah. That kind of thing. And again, the commanders, I feel like everybody kind of encircled was like, oh, this should be an easier game compared to the Chiefs or the, or, um, the Buffs, the Bills, the Bills. et cetera. The Buffs are clearly I'll on also my mind. If Josh Allen turns the ball over four times against the Broncos the way that uh, he did against the Jets, I get it with. Oh, but they, man. They won that game. The Jets won that game I know. With, with Aaron Rodgers going down four plays in unbelievable it still is crazy i'm like super i'm interested to see what ends up happening there with new york do you think that they actually stick with wilson no i think i i think that robert sala is just dead inside thinking <laughs> that he got away from he got away from having just to start zach wilson who they inside. don't believe in and they drafted him number two overall yeah and like you'd need to play that guy and flesh it out because of the investment that you made in him to mm -hmm. a certain degree but i would not have been stunned if they had done what the Cardinals did when they drafted Josh Rosen, were terrible, and then immediately took Kyler Murray the next year, number one overall. Uh, they haven't done that, but true. I, I don't think they have any interest in playing Zach Wilson for the long run. I want to go back to this comment because I feel like we've been seeing it a lot actually with Jerry Judy, and it's Jerry or Judy is so overrated. Has he lived up to the expectations that were set for him, or is this a true statement? It's a true statement, but. It's it, there's like a caveat to it. I don't think Jerry Judy, the athlete, the route runner, the receiver mm -hmm. is overrated. Okay. But the impact that Jerry Judy, Fair. as was heralded the best wide receiver in the best wide receiver class of all time yep. at the time he was drafted, has not that hype, that reputation, that standard, that production has not translated onto the field. So Jerry Judy's productive capability mm -hmm. is overrated the talent the physical nature and, and all of that is there mm -hmm. it just has not translated so i'm not going to say that you're way off base if you say hey jerry judy's overrated because until we do start to see yeah. that that magic every week week in and week out like we see with justin jefferson like we see with garrett wilson mm -hmm. and, and, and other receivers in that class yes he is overrated here's the deal too he hasn't had a great quarterback to throw to him. Agreed. He hasn't really been given the correct tools to really like get that engine up and running. I don't know that if you put Jerry Judy on the Vikings mm -hmm. and and put Justin Jefferson on Denver, I don't know that Jerry Judy has the numbers yep. and the production that Justin Jefferson has because I think Justin Jefferson is just way better. Yeah. I think that he was slept on in that draft. Um, but Jerry Judy's numbers would look a lot better. You're ready for the comments. Judy is our best wide receiver, though. He is. True. Not even close. That's how bad we are, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. It's... See, I, 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 don't, I don't know about it. Like, I think Judy, again, it hasn't translated on the field, but when you just look at Jerry Judy, the football player, he has all of the, the earmarks of a wide receiver one in the NFL. Yeah. Everything else around has been dysfunctional, and he struggled with drops and all that. I get it. He's not perfect. But it's not like we're trotting out, you know, Chase Claypool and Julio, another wide receiver in that class, yeah. Julio Jones. And, you know, I, I, I don't think that on paper the Broncos have one of the worst wide receiver rooms in the NFL. Yeah. There's no doubt. But, again, Jerry Judy does possess the, the ability to be a number one, to be an alpha. It just hasn't happened yet. Coming back this weekend against the Commanders, if you had to guess the stat line for Jerry Judy, what are you going with? Well, let's see. I'm uh, going with like four targets. Wow, only four? Yeah, I'm not, I don't think. First is of all, he, I know. catching all of them then? It was, Gosh, I sure like, hope so. So I, I, my, my first thought was he, he'd have five receptions, 67 yards, and maybe a, a touchdown. Mm. Okay. Like, you know, because I, I until they prove to me offensively that they can break through the 17 points a game threshold and we're still kind of getting a feel for what Sean Payton's tempo and and his game flow is going to look like. It's you're never going to see me predict a game for a Broncos wide receiver where it's going to be like nine catches, 111 yards. Nope. and two. It's just not going to happen again. I really think it's going to be like four targets because I think that they will 
I don't like to use the word like baby him, but I think mm-hmm. they'll be a little easier on him. Um, I think we're going to see big numbers from Cortland Sutton this week. I've just got a feeling in my gut, but we know that they have rotation. Like they are mm-hmm. going to ro- rotate people left and right out there. So um, I actually like that out of Sean Payton. You never know what you're going to get if you're trying to figure out this Broncos offense. But I have, I just have a gut feeling on Cortland Sutton this week that we're going to see something good. Yeah, bring I mean, it listen, on, Cortland. If Jerry Don't Judy, let me... if Jerry Judy's back on the uh, on the field, that's going to draw attention from the opposing defenses. Yep. You probably get a number one corner rotated over to Jerry Judy, leaving uh, a, you know the number two guy or a lesser corner on Cortland Sutton. So yep. I could see a world where it happens. And again, we need it from Cortland Sutton. For sure. can't, even if Jerry Judy comes back and is is great, is the best version of himself, it's not enough. You no. can't just have one guy. It wasn't just on the, against the Raiders. Devontae Adams is clear in a way the best receiver on that team, yep. but he was mostly neutralized by Pat Sertan. They needed Jacoby Myers to pick on Damari Mathis all game yep. to keep them moving. Yep, 100%. Uh, Thursday night football. I'm so excited, you guys. I'm so happy football is back. It's Minnesota versus Philadelphia. 93% of people are taking the Eagles. Who are you rolling with, Richie? Uh, yeah, 110%. Kelly. Minnesota, listen, I'm a Kirk Cousins guy to hell or high water, but. Uh, I think Minnesota, their prowess and their kind of like, uh, you know, reputation was inflated a little bit because they had a lot of one score games that just broke their way. And that tends to be something that the pendulum swings the other way the next year. So like if you hit all green lights Mm -hmm. on the way there, you're going to catch some reds coming back. So I think Minnesota is going to struggle a little bit more. This year, they do have a potent offense with TJ Hawkinson and Justin Jefferson. And, you know, the running game's a little different without Dalvin Cook. But the Eagles are a pretty well-oiled machine. And I just think that they, on a short week, I think I give them the advantage because I think they're the better team. It's funny because when I talk to people about Minnesota, I'm like, they were the opposite of the Broncos last year. Because the Broncos lost all their one score games or whatever Mm -hmm. it came. Was it six of them? Something like that. Something crazy like that. And the Vikings won seven of them. Like they got lucky on seven of those games. So I'm always like, they're just like the opposite, right? Like the glass half full, glass half empty. Unfortunately, if you look at it, Broncos half empty, but they got the half full part. Mm -hmm. So that I always say that. I'm like, I think they're very similar. The Broncos are dying so that the Vikings can live. (laughs) We'll lose all our one score games so that you can win. I feel like they're very similar teams. I think that they have maybe a few more like key pieces that are better Mm -hmm. than the Broncos, but I do Mm -hmm. think they're very similar in a lot of things too. Um, Let's see. Um, don't know who you are, but sorry, I will not talk about that. Vikings are like the Colorado Rockies. They are the purple nurple of the NFL. I've never heard that. I don't know about that. I don't. I, the Vikings are, are the Colorado Rockies are the basement. The Lots of people are of saying League baseball. The Vikings are Vikings. Yeah, the Vikings are a decent team. I think if you're going to say the, if something's the Rockies of the of the NFL, yeah. they're uh, like the Cleveland Browns when they won one game in two years. That, to me, is more Rockies of the NFL yeah. than the Vikings. And it's definitely interesting. Um, also, hard to believe this, okay? You ready? I'm ready. I actually think what Jay Norvell is doing is working. I am seeing a ton of people in the comments who are saying, CSU is going to beat CU this weekend. What? I mean, if, if what? what he's trying to do is delude people, then yes, it's working. I'm 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 very confused by Rally all the comments. The troops. Yeah, okay, I get it. But again, don't write a check that you can't cash. So if you go out there and you bang I'm, your chest and you know, my mama taught me this and, and this and that and this and that, uh you better be able to have an explanation and back it up when all that trash talk gets thrown right back in your face. I'm just I'm quite confused. Not that I want to hate on any Ram fans ever, but where are you getting this from? Did this just hype you up on this Thursday morning? You were like, you know what? If my coach believes, I'm going to believe, or I have lots of questions. Cinderella upsets happen. You know, UMBC beats number one seed Virginia. Quietly, I agree. You, you know, UMBC beats number one seed Virginia. Appalachian State takes down Michigan. Mm -hmm. You know, like those games happen. They're the ones that we remember forever, and then we get the anniversary videos every year on social media, and how cool was that, and all that. But again. Most of the time, Cinderella's carriage is a pumpkin, okay? <laughs> it's not always sunshine and rainbows. So, no. like, the likely outcome is that they get destroyed because they're just 
they're not as good of a team. They don't have the same resources and all that. And that's not a crime. But to go out there and say, like, we're going to, like, you know, we're just going to talk out of one side of our mouth, it's not a good strategy. Oh, man. Oh, it looks like a coffee bet is around the corner. If someone wants to bet me some coffee because you are going with the Rams, I will gladly take you up on that offer. I, I think I've gladly. I, somebody did this with me when when I was in college, when the Broncos played the Seahawks in the Super Bowl, because I was so confident the Broncos were going to win that game. The most unstoppable me too. offense of all time. I was like, it's going to be a bloodbath. Yeah, I, I didn't think. And, and so my my boss at the time, we went uh, as a as a work. We went to go watch the game at a movie theater. Mm -hmm. They were playing it on the big screen. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, I had just had surgery, so I was probably doped up on pain meds. Um, <laughs> what did you bet? He he didn't bet me, but he asked me before the game, like, "What's your percentage confidence that the Broncos are going to win the Super Bowl?" I said, "100 percent." 100%. I'm so confident. Snap goes over Peyton's head for a safety. And you were like, What's your never mind. I go, 101%. We're fine. This is going to be great. And, I, and so then every score or every turnover or every play, he uh. would just turn back to me and be like, what's your percentage confidence? Or whatever. And like by halftime, it was like, zero we're done. We're done. it's over yeah, it was they were lifeless and i i i feel like now i'm gonna do that with you with csu like how are we feeling rach like not good they go out there and score the first touchdown they run the opening kickoff back for a touchdown gonna give you any hope any mm -hmm. life I don't know. It's going to be a fun experiment. Uh, yes. If you're going to the game up in Boulder and you are a CSU fan, definitely tweet at me because I would love to come say hi to you guys. It's going to be a lot of fun on Saturday. Of course, we'll be back tomorrow morning. Um, everybody in the um, comments saying, Rachel, I feel for you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'll take she all your love your and support. And at this uh, but otherwise, we'll be back 1030 tomorrow morning. You guys have a wonderful day. Get back to work and we'll see you then.